Lima's public transportation system has for many years been known to be very disorganized and very chaotic, and for someone coming in from another country trying to figure it all out is a bit confusing. But we're going to try and figure it out, and we're also going to talk about the ways that they're trying to uh, create a more unified and more organized public transportation system here in Lima. So come along. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So here in Lima, they've had, for the longest time, a very uh, disorganized, sort of ad hoc public transportation system. Definitely not the kind that you would uh, recognize uh, for a long time. Definitely not the kind that you would recognize if you were coming from, say, Europe or the United States. A lot of places, um, they would just have, like, private buses that, um, a private bus even something as small as like this bus right here. That little micro bus. And uh, those buses basically just run a route along a certain major street. And um, you'd kind of have to know where the bus goes and where to get on and where to get off and how much it costs. It's very hard to find any of that information online. So if you're visiting uh, Lima, it becomes very difficult to get around by public transportation, but that's something that is changing. As of more recently, within the last 10 or 15 years, they've started to uh, develop more organized public transit. Public transit that's, uh, that's sponsored um, and, and really more public, uh, public transit that is um, more organized. So when I was planning my trip to Lima, of course, one of the things I do when I plan a trip to a new city is I start looking at their public transportation. I try and find a map see if they have a metro, see what the bus situation looks like. And uh, I actually managed to find a map of uh, a metro system in Peru, and I, uh, in Lima. And I said, well, this is cool. They have a whole metro. That's great. And I just went ahead and booked the trip, uh, not realizing that the map that I was looking at was actually a like future plan for the metro of Lima and that they really only had one uh, metro line so far. So... Um, once I arrived in Lima, I did a lot more research about uh, trying to get around, and I found some some really great blogs. Uh, of course, the blogs that I'm showing here, I'm linking them in the description so you can check them out as well. But basically, the general consensus is there is absolutely no organized system to a lot of the bus lines. A lot of them are private. You pay in cash. There's nowhere to go online to see like what their route is and to see a map. Um, the public transportation uh, layer on Google Maps is basically useless because it's so inaccurate. And you really have to just sort of like ask people at, that are standing at the bus stop like, hey, where does this bus go? Does it go by, you know, this place that I'm trying to go to? And there are actually people on the bus who work for the bus who will at each stop sort of um, get off the bus and like yell out what are the next few stops or some of the main stops on the on the route. So if you speak Spanish uh, well enough and you can understand what they're saying and you have uh, knowledge enough of the city itself, then, of course, you can tell exactly where this bus is going to go and whether or not you should take it. Of course, if you're coming from like the United States, like I am, and your Spanish is not so great like mine, and you also are completely unfamiliar with the city and its layout and its landmarks and its streets and the names of those streets, well, then it becomes a little tricky to, uh, to take these buses. But there is, of course, um, a silver lining in that they are... The city of Lima is adding new public transportation options that are much more organized. Um, they, they have added some and they're continuing to add more. And uh, those were basically the things that I took most often. I would take the, uh, the options that were, uh, that, were, that were listed online that you could pay for uh, using a transit card and that it was sort of easier to see, like in your Google Maps public transportation layer, exactly where this thing was going. 
one of those things that they've done is the Metropolitano. In addition to that, they have some bus lines now that run along certain corridors in the city that are like maintained, I guess, by the ATU, which is the like public transportation authority of the city of Lima. So we're actually gonna go hop on the Metropolitano right now, which is a bus rapid transit system. So the station for the Metropolitano is right here and uh, the bus rapid transit, it runs along the freeway here. When you get closer to the center of the city, it runs um, up into the city streets. But here along the freeway, the buses have their own dedicated lanes and they're big, uh, you know, like double long buses with the accordion in the middle to let it go around turns. And you go on a station from an overpass. So anywhere that they had existing overpasses, they could pretty, pretty easily build a new station and there's a platform in the middle. So you board it basically the same way you would like a metro, like a train. Um, and it's pretty efficient. And you use a card, like this bad boy, to get into it. And um, it runs for a pretty long way from the south part of the city all the way up into the northern part of the city. Multiple lines, as you can see, CB259. In whichever direction you want to head, you just head to that platform, wait for the bus to get on. Here comes one right now. They line up right next to the platform, the doors open, you hop in, easy peasy. It really functions uh, a lot more like a uh, subway or a metro train than it does a bus because it's off the streets, it has its own dedicated um, lanes the map for the lines right here and our bus is showing up right now so we can hop right on and there we go got off at our stop about uh, seven six or seven stops away it took us probably like six or seven minutes to get there um, and now I've actually taken the same route uh, during rush hour on a surface street bus that has to run along the surface street with all the same traffic and uh, it took me about 25 minutes or so to go the same distance. So definitely a major upgrade. Now, today actually is a, uh, is a holiday here. It's a good Friday. So strangely, the streets are actually pretty empty uh, because a lot of stuff is closed. A lot of people are not out on the streets. But I will tell you, like during rush hour, in a typical typical rush hour on a typical weekday non-holiday here in Lima the traffic is absolutely insane typical rush hour traffic in Lima looks like this basically a bunch of cars a ton of cars a ton of buses everybody stuck in traffic honking at each other that's typical that's the typical Lima rush hour traffic right here and taking a bus on a surface street is kind of a nightmare because you're just stuck in all the traffic with with everybody else you can only go as fast as the traffic goes and you're also pulling over every you know two or three blocks to make a stop so the bus rapid transit system especially here in the parts where it runs along the freeway and it doesn't have to stop at any cross streets or anything super fast not all the private buses are little micro buses like that in fact some of them are full-size buses just like this but they'll say on the side what the route name is and on the side like some of the streets where they're gonna stop those cross streets but you pay in cash and uh, their schedules aren't really like published online anywhere so it's kind of hard to find. Now these buses right here, like this one that we're walking past on the right, this blue bus, number 305, that's actually a bus that's run by the ATU, the uh, Autoridad Transportación Urbano, right? So that's like the city of Lima and Cachao. That's like the transportation authority of the city. So those, you can actually use the same card, the Metropolitano card, to pay 
you just load money on and you pay with your card, same way you would on the Metropolitano, the bus rapid transit. Now, the interesting thing is, there's actually two different cards. This is kind of confusing. I'm not sure why this is this is such, but there's a Metropolitano card that works on the Metropolitano, the bus rapid transit, and also the Metro, which is like an electric train. <laughs> They're actually have one line now with another partial line and they're building out more lines and that card will also work on these uh, city buses like that 305 bus that we just saw there's a separate card though that was uh, made for these city buses the ones that were on the street uh, called the Lima pass and that card will work on the city buses but it will also work for the Metropolitano and for the Metro so exactly the origins and how it ended up that way but there are two cards two separate payment systems uh, that both work for everything which is a little redundant and I don't know if anybody has more knowledge about this because like doing the research on this is very hard to find why this is the way it is but if anybody in the comments has more knowledge on why they have like two cards completely separate systems that work to pay for like the same thing they basically do the exact same thing let me know down in the comments. So like we mentioned in Lima here, they also have a uh, electric train. They're building out a metro, a metro system with multiple trains. And here we are at the one of the trains. Well, it's really the only line right now, line one. There is a second line that they've built. The second line has, I think, about four or five stops built, and they're extending it out. And eventually, I think they're planning to have like five or six different lines. Um, this line is a full line that runs north and south through the city. And uh, we're gonna hop on and uh, check it out, see what the ride is like. So we got our card right here. And I had thought before that the card for the Metropolitano would work here, but it doesn't, you need a separate card. <laughs> now this station will look familiar to anybody who uh, lives in a city where they have elevated trains. Uh, the train runs along this track. Nice big station. We're gonna head up, hop on, we'll ride it for a few stops. Um, cause there's actually, actually is a neighborhood that I want to check out. It's a couple, a couple stops away from here. So we'll see how the ride is. And, uh, when we get to that neighborhood, maybe we can talk a little bit more about what the future development is planned to be here of the public transportation system in Lima. Here comes our train. You can see it's fully electric. Got the wires running all on the top. And I'm not sure exactly where these train carriages are like from, but my guess is they're Chinese. My guess is they're from China. I'm gonna find out. Maybe there's something inside that'll let us know, but that's gonna be my guess. So I was wrong. They're actually not Chinese. It's uh, some of them are Italian and some of them are French. The companies, I can't remember right now, but I'll put the names down in the subtitles. And it's interesting because when I was looking into the uh, the Lima the Lima Metro to try and find out who made these trains, I got more into the history of the development of the Lima Metro, which <laughs> is quite a long and interesting uh, history. I'm coming to you here from another time in an undisclosed location, and we can talk a little bit about it because. For a very long time, uh, they've been trying to make a Lima Metro system. So it, it goes, the history of the development goes much further back than I thought. Um, back in the early 1900s, they actually had those electrified tram lines that would run between like Miraflores and Barranco up to the city center. 
And we saw some of those outside the electricity museum in Barranco. And this was at a time when, like, that part of the city was really just sort of, like, resort, beachside resorts that really weren't, like, connected by sprawl to the rest of the city. So the city of Lima was, like, the, the central part. And they would run those tram lines to get there. So that was sort of a public transportation system, but it wasn't comprehensive enough to cover the entire city once the sprawl developed all the way out um, and connected the center of uh, Lima out to, like, the, sh the, the coast in Miraflores and Barranco. So what happened was in the 1970s, in the early 1970s, there was a plan to make a complete underground subway system which uh, was moving along, but they realized that a combination of, um, well, basically the, the fact that it's a seismic area with lots of potential earthquakes, the soil composition of the area around Lima was like not great for digging subway tunnels, and then also the uh, global economic problems in the late 70s um, sort of they basically ran out of money. They didn't have the funding. They weren't able to secure the funds to, uh, to do the underground metro project. So it just sort of went stagnant. And cut to, you know, almost more than 10 years later in 1986, under Peruvian President Alan Garcia, um, th then the plan to make what is now the modern metro system, the train, electric train system in Peru, in Lima, that's when it started. And um, it kicked off and was moving, you know, pretty quickly. There was a uh, Italian uh, company that was financing it that won the bid. So the investment came from Italy to build out the lines. And they built a service maintenance area down in the southern part of the city where they would service and maintenance and like maintain all the trains. They then started to build a line moving north towards the center of the city, but uh, a combination of political scandals and economic mismanagement, uh, they basically ran out of money again. And for decades, really, there were um, like pieces of the metro line unfinished, just in different neighborhoods, right? Big columns that were gonna hold up the, the, the track and even though they actually made some functional track, about six or seven stations worth of functional track, it didn't really go from anywhere to anywhere with enough um, potential for riders, right? It didn't make its way all the way into the center of the city. So there wasn't enough ridership to keep it active. So they basically just sort of shut it down except for um, running it every so often just for like maintenance, preventative maintenance purposes. And it sort of, for, for basically like two decades, became just sort of an eyesore in the city and uh, kind of like a running joke in, in Lima. There's actually like a, um, an artist, I can't remember her name right now, I'll put it in the subtitle, but she made this whole like uh, parody campaign called Lima Metro 2427, which was basically like when it will be finished based on the current progress, rate of progress. And she like made stickers and flyers and signs for all of it at all of these different places where there was going to be a station. Um, so interestingly enough, in the 2000s, in the early 2000s, uh, Alan Garcia got elected president again. And in his second term as president, he revitalized the Metro project. And that is what eventually led to the opening of the Line 1, the Green Line Metro. Uh, in 2014. And it was funded this time by a consortium between a Brazilian company and a Peruvian company. And they made the, the Line 1, and it's actually quite impressive. The Line 1 Metro, I think, is is a really big accomplishment for Peru, because, or for Lima specifically, because um, it's very, very long. It's like 36 kilometers long. It's like just over 20 miles long. It's very... Um, very long line, it's, it runs very smooth, it's very new, very modern, the, the stations are very modern. And they've started a second line, which has not yet connected to that first line, but unfortunately, the second line also is now 
at this point um, over budget and um, past its deadline or past its predicted completion date and they only have like five or six stations on it uh, so eventually the system if it ever makes its way to becoming what it originally was like envisioned to be it's going to be great it's going to cover all the major neighborhoods of the city it's going to provide um, the you know the elevated the elevated trains will provide easy access from all the major points in the city the center all the neighborhoods in the south north east west and also into Kajau, where the airport is so i don't know i hope i hope that they're able to pull it together um but you know the history is not great and as i was doing more research it's not just the research that led me to believe that there was a lot of like mismanagement and corruption but also i talked to people in peru while i was there in lima um, i talked to a number of uber and cab drivers because the public transportation system doesn't really cover a great part of the city sometimes to get places you got to take an uber or take a cab and i was talking to this one cab driver and he was just talking about how it's such you know how, how bad it is that this it's taken so long for this thing to get finished and uh, he blamed it on corruption he said there's too many hands right too many hands in the project um, trying to get money out of it and uh, you know some of the scandals during uh, Alan Garcia's first presidency when they were first trying to build the metro were bribery scandals and corruption scandals based around the metro itself so who knows how it's going to go in the future but um, they're on their way Lima is on its way to having a organized very well organized and um, and modern uh, public transportation system between the bus rapid transit and the metro which who knows when it's going to be completed but when, when it is completed as it's planned will be a very very modern um, and well organized public transportation system and to be honest i hope they get there i really do because lima is a really great city and it would be um, a huge like a uh, boon for not just the residents of Lima to be able to get around on a modern metro system, but also to bring in more tourists. Like, uh, tourists would be more likely to visit, I think, if they knew that there was this modern uh, metro system and it made it very, very easy to get around the city and not so complicated. So, I think that's going to be it for the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. This is a, something that like I like nerd out about, public transportation. I think it's really interesting. And the way that they're developing it um, in Lima is really interesting to see because a lot of the times you either go you go to a, a city and they either have a public transportation system that's fully like finished or they don't. And it was interesting to see this, uh, this sort of like in transition public transportation system uh, when I visited Lima. So uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.